Good afternoon. Welcome to summer. So, after last week's video, and I was talking about koi food, I've half solved the problem. I now I know. In fact, I spoke to a few of you at Buyer Diaries Koi Show, Growing Show event the other day. I was getting a bit of beef about this. Still being in the corner and not on a shelf. Still don't know what I want to do with it. I'm toying with the idea of getting a bracket made that will uh, rest on this post and then have it slightly elevated. But I, it's, not, it's no rush in these things, is there? It's working. Anyway, food. So yeah, to stop the fish being crazy lunatics isn't really going to happen. But if I can ease the congestion at the top of the feeder, when the feed in, that's the the plan. So I've resolved said problem hopefully by purchasing as we know the world's most expensive koi food near enough. So got some sake balance sinking. I've obviously opened the pack because I put a bit in. Um, but yeah so why not spend a fortune on everything, might as well spend a fortune on food as well. So I'm going to feed that solely in the feeder and then I'm going to take all of the floating stuff, I say all, there's only about half, the auto feed is only about half full now anyway, but I'm going to take all of that out and just keep that for if I want to feed off the surface, but if I do that I've been using my treat tubs anyway, but I'll take that out and I'll fill the, the feeder up just with the sinking stuff. Um, and I've fed them, I've had that three or four days now, and I've fed a few cupfuls of it. One, the fish like it, luckily, they've just been straight on it, they're not too fussy anyway. And because they're feeding on the bottom, they look a lot comfier when they're doing it, and a lot happier. The food goes down quicker, which is good, and it stops them being absolute lunatics on the top of the surface, and causing water carnage everywhere, and obviously the potentials of maybe knocking somebody out especially the bigger fish maybe knocking a smaller fish over the window off the side of the pond or anything like that so that's the plan there and i know there's a lot of you that are already doing that and i've had a few messages from a few of you quite a few messages in in fact and that's the way that you do it um and it's solved all of your problems with regards to the fish being nuts so i've taken some advice what the hell's that that fell off there. I've taken some advice from some of you. But not everyone said buy Saki, but I thought, why not? Uh, we'll give the bash. Uh, yeah, hopefully, as I say, I've, from what I've seen so far, the fish feeding on the bottom, they've just looked a lot happier, and it's just been a, a more pleasant experience for everybody when the feeder goes off. Although, they know the noise, they still go flying over, but then um, when the the feed is falling through the water column they're sort of sh straight down on it so it's good i might have already got some clips on video i can't remember if not i'll um i'll get some clips on video late the next evening or so when the feeder goes off and uh, we'll see it in action so to speak so i'm just about to actually fill the feeder up now because i hadn't done that just yet because i'm lazy i've been busy i'm going to swap the food out now and then put the spare stuff in the tub and then as I said I'm going to take the rest of the, the floaters out of the auto feeder. Just a little job for today, nothing too stressful. Anyway, catch in a bit. Hello and welcome back. Slightly embarrassing but I'm going to tell you a story. So following on from the last clip, which is the bit you saw before this, You'll know that I've changed my feed over to Saki Balance, all sinking, uh, with probably 50 grams worth of floating feed of an evening. I normally come out about 10 o'clock and put a little cup full of floating in just to watch the fish while I'm just chilling out before bed, really, just to make sure everyone's okay. Now, 
Andrew Daly, not the most cleverest and sharpest tool out there. I noticed the other day that the water had gone quite cloudy. I don't know if this is going to pick up on camera. It's not quite as crystal clear as it usually is. But I thought, you know, I've changed over foods. It might just be everything adjusting. And I probably need to adjust the volume on the feeder. But I'll sort that out whenever. Well, that whenever is today. Purely because I see last year's Grow and Show fish from Biocoy Farm, that kahaku down there, which you're not really going to see, swimming around, much like it was then, with a clamped fin. So I thought, I'll come out. I've got a few hours this afternoon spell. I'll come out, I'll do some water tests, and then, if needed, I'll do some scrapes. So, I did my water tests, and I thought, while I'm waiting for the nitrite to count down for the million minutes that it takes, I'll just net it, and I'll give it a quick scrape. The scope's ready. Well, it takes two minutes to set it up. And other than one half-dead fluke on said scrape, there was nothing. I'm going to say half-dead. The fluke was literally... There was one fluke on it, on the scrape, and it was hardly moving. It was sort of half-shaking, half-not. It wasn't really... I'm thinking it's probably not that. So then when I'd done that, my... Ammonia and nitrite readers were done. And that's where we saw these numbers, which I'll overlay in a second. So, right, not good reading, is it? So what have I done? Well, so I filled the feeder up with the new Saki Balance, and I've not adjusted any of the settings on the feeder, so it's still feeding at a rate of three, whatever the, the number three feed amount is. On the old setting, which was 30 grams, or on the old food, sorry. So setting three on the old food was 30 grams. Setting three with the Saki balance in there is 100 grams. So that's what's been happening. Basically, the pond has been getting way too much food. Way, 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 way too much food. So I'm feeding... So 100, gra 100 grams a pop, and I'm feeding 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 eight times a day so they've been getting probably 700 grams of food a day from if you remember the other week when i weighed it 230 240 so i've tripled the amount of food going in literally overnight and they've been getting that all week hence the water being shot and my water parameters being ridiculous hence the fish being clamped and there's been a bit of flicking and a bit of flashing so that will account for probably i would say all of that so I've been a complete idiot. But it's okay, we can sort it. So I'm going to turn my trickle in up a tad. And I'm going to now weigh out. Again. So I need that. I need a tub. And I need my scales. I'm going to weigh out each of the, the feed settings on that with the Saki balance in it. So I know exactly how much I'm feeding. So that, there's quite a lot in there. That's how much they were getting. That's half, enough half a mug, maybe a third of a mug of pellets, which is nearly 100 grams. Well, it's just under 100 grams, so I've just said 100 because a couple come out, a few bits come out. Oh, it's an absolute idiot. But yeah, easily rectified. But that'll explain the ridiculous water readings and the ridiculous water clarity complete idiot right so 
and get my pen and pencil and do the arduous task of clicking the buttons, catching the food and weighing it all out. We'll come back in a bit. I've got last, when I did the last lots of food, so I'll, uh, we'll have a look at the, the different amounts between the feed settings for the different types of food, even though I can't quite remember what the old food was. I still haven't bothered looking for that, but it's irrelevant now, really. But, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'll catch you in a bit when I've done the task, and then we'll have a look. See you in a minute. Oh, my God. Right, we've done our working out. So quickly, I'm just going to show you the pellets. So that's what I was feeding, which I can't remember what it was exactly. Probably some kind of JPD stuff. Can't remember. And that's the sake. So it's quite a bit smaller, but it's a lot denser, obviously, because it's a sinking pellet. Anyway. So then, I've just gone through all the feeder settings. And... So this is what this is the old food, what was in there, whatever it is, and this is the sake. So that's more than double there. That's nearly triple. That is triple. That's two and a half times. That's nearly triple. Well, I didn't go much, I didn't go above setting five on the feeder because look at that, 155 grams of sake setting five. I'm never going to be feeding that. I'm probably going to be around one two three or four which is a maximum 122 grams of feed but we're we're not on that yet because it's not quite warm enough i need to ramp the temperature up what's the cat doing he's loving it I've now changed the feeder to this. So eight in the morning, set in two, 61 grams, 10, one, one feed set in 28 grams. That gives me, with a hand feed of the evening, or without a hand feed, sorry, 328 grams. You probably can't see that. I don't know why I'm showing you that close up. So 328 grams, so that's, Slightly more than I was on before, but massively less than they were on uh, for this past five days. Oh my god, so I've put, I've put 500 grams of bloody food in in five days. Hey ho. So that will definitely clear the water up and that will definitely stop the fish from uh, looking a bit moody and hopefully flashing, flicking, and all the other jazz that they've been doing and there's been a lot of waste in the pond but obviously I've gone from a reasonable amount of food to an absolute crazy amount of food and I might have a look in the drum actually because there's probably going to be a lot more mess in that it's probably due a clean anyway so I may do that so lesson learnt if like me folks don't be an Andy if like me you haven't weighed all that stuff out because you've been putting it off and not really thinking about it do it because that's uh could cause me a lot of issues, especially if I'd gone away and the auto food was spewing that amount of food in. But we'll see. Or not we'll see. Don't do it. So I'm going to have a quick look inside the drum. I've turned my auto feeder off now for today. So I'm not going to feed them anything today. And then I'll do some more water checks tomorrow just to hopefully see some of these numbers come down because. As we know, nitrite and ammonia is not the, uh, the best thing in the world for your fish. But I'd like to think in the next few days that the field will catch up. And I'm going to turn the heater up because it's absolutely roasting. I'm going to make use of these temperatures. I don't know what we're at. Twenty point. 20.5 Can't get the button to work So 20.5, I'll put it up a degree, so 21.5 And then in a couple of days, I'll knock it up again 
what am I like? Right, let's tidy this stuff away, have a look inside the drum, give that a jet out. And if I find anything interesting in there, I'll show you. Right, catch you in a bit, bye. Disaster. I pulled the hose over ready to plug into there. Just the hose, left it in here, went back, turned the water on, come back. I forgot I had a connector on the end of the hose. So just spray water everywhere. Hey ho. We'll have a, a mini disaster. So. Haven't had a go in here for a while. Let's put that down there for a minute. I'll turn that off. Yeah, as expected, it's all a bit manky. I'm going to give this a bit of a blast out. Move that as well. The usual build up on the way shoot is probably a thing. So I'm going to just clear everything out that's in there. And then get it all back going. In fact, I might take the pump out so I don't get wet. That's the pump out. And the UV. UV to that one, I think. That's the UV. That's the cleaning pump, so I can turn it. Or oh, maybe not. What's going on? Going on there, why won't that go? Put this back in. Oh, that's the drum. That's not for the UV, that's for the drum. Right, that's the cleaning thing. Right, there we go, that's the button I wanted. Right, the UV then, maybe that's the UV. Should label them really. That's just that's like a spare one. They're labelled, but that's not. Right, I've got a torch. Yeah, it's just all a bit minging. So give it a big clean out, ready for the summer season ahead. We'll be good to go. Right, let's make some more mess. just taken the way shoot off and as expected there's always a build up of a few bits of junk on the of the shoe and you can see in the edges of the drum there as well so I'm going to try and get as much of that out as I can um, I'm going to get to get a bucket to catch all the rubbish that's going to come out great So that's about as clean as I'm going to be able to get it. I've spun the drum round a few times. The muck that's in there now is what it's picked up because it needs to clean. But I've jetted the screen. I should have took a before and after. I did this half first just to see. And you can clearly see the biofilm on the other side compared to this one. So I've jetted both sides of the screen off all the way round. And just cleared all the odd bits that were sticking on the waste chute. So that's all sorted. I mean, I'm not, I'm not getting all that off. And I've got a bucket full of crap. Get that out. What am I doing? I'm going to end up spilling it. I'm standing in enough water as it is. So that's the sh absolute crap that came out of the drum, which I put in the flowers. There's excess food in there. That's to be expected through feeding. Eight, nine hundred grams of food a day. I'm still in shock about that. And to top it all off, the jet wash has died. Luckily, I'm just about finished. That's why I'm giving up now. Um, I might just run a cloth. I will probably run a cloth round just on this edge here. Maybe on these few bits here. That's got a cloth. A manky cloth here, this is for magic, and then that'll be it. But it's not really, I think I, I gave it a, a jet out maybe 
twice last year and a bit of a clean up so there still is a little bit of maintenance to do with a drum but it's not like a weekly or a, a daily maintenance you'd be doing with uh, something else mechanical wise anyway we'll put it back together it's obviously due a clean and then I'll see what else I've managed to catch I'll put the camera on the shoot and we'll see what else we've got that's come out there was a few big lumps of don't know what it was congealed crap but it's all gone now right see you in a minute so put the drum back on So that was a manual clean, that wasn't actually a drum clean. I just held my finger down. And there was a few decent bits of crap in there that I hadn't managed to get out, which is now gone. Oh, what a busy day. What a mess. So that, I can uh, wrap stuff up in here now. I've just turned the trickle in up. I'm going to leave that on, I'm out later on my bike, and when I get back, so it's going to be, what's the time now? 10 to 5, I'll be back about 8, so 3 hours at 2 litres a minute, and then I'll turn it back down to what I'm at, which is about, it's under a litre a minute, just give it a bit of a boost. Right, laters. So there we go. Lesson well and truly burnt. <sighs> Complete idiot. Hey ho. Very heavy. <clears throat> A little bit heavy. Anyway. So that's it for this week. Thanks for watching me moan about koi food. And the expensive stuff that is koi food. And not knowing how much koi food wastes. I'll catch you next week. Should have already seen the buyer. Um, my God, spit it out. Hopefully, you've already seen the buyer koi show fish video. If not, that'll be out in the next day or two. I have got all the clips put together. I didn't film anything on the day. It was just literally coming home and then putting the fish in the pond, which you can't see because the water's rubbish. So, yep. Yeah, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next week. Keep your eye out for that other video if it's not already out. And I'll see you soon. Bye.